This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Guys, and we are back live here in Honolulu, Hawaii, with the Prince of Investing. As always, I'm your host, Prince Dice, coming to you guys live from Denver, Colorado. And I want to say out, to, out there to everybody, where you hear this on the podcast or YouTube or anything like that, all the people that's catching us live, um, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button, and drop some comments if you guys um, have any questions or what you guys think. But as always, we got a very, very interesting topic today, and we got a very, very interesting guest. And today, what, I'm, what we're going to be talking about, as you guys can see in the description box and into the title, we're going to be talking about professional athletes, financial literacy, financial literacy, professional athletes. As you guys see all the time, we've had you know several athletes here on the platform, but now we want to. Why do we always hear these stories? These 30 for 30s are broke. Why do we hear all these stories of millions of dollars are squandered away and other things like that? But I know you guys ain't tuning in just to hear my mouth. And I know you guys don't want to hear my mouth all the time. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in my special guest, Miss Tywana Smith. So if you guys who don't know who Miss Tywana Smith is, she's referred to as the Players GM. She's a ex She's a former WNBA player herself, Women's National Basketball League, um, you know, WNBA, Women's Professional Basketball. First time ever having a WNBA player on the show. Um, and she's representing dozens of clients, you know, dozens of clients and things like that. You know, she went to Ole Miss, played basketball there, you know, earned her uh, MBA in marketing and, and marketing. And we're just going to sit back. We're going to talk to her and get a better understanding of financial literacy in the NBA and WNBA, NFL, all the other great stuff. Without further ado, to everybody out there, let me introduce my guest, Mr. Tawana Smith. How you doing? Yeah, I'm awesome. Awesome. Very excited to be on the Investor Show. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you for being here. We're uh, definitely glad to have you. You know, now I know I told, told people a little bit about yourself, um, Ms. Tawana Smith, but people out there who don't know who you are, can you give people a brief um, message of who is, who is Ms. Tawana Smith? Absolutely. I wear a lot of hats. Uh, mm -hmm. I am a former professional athlete. Uh, I didn't play in the WNBA. I played in Europe. Oh, you played um, so in Europe. I okay. clarify that. Right, right. But I am okay. a former pro basketball player, and now I'm a business manager to other yeah. professional oh, athletes. Okay. Uh, I'm a best-selling author, and I have created a coaching system for athletes to prepare them for their various transitions. My ultimate goal is to create profitable, popular, uh, protected, and post-career ready athletes. And I have a very, um, very well-rounded team through the Athletes Nexus, which is uh, my business management group. Mm -hmm. uh, to really serve all the needs of an athlete that goes, um, you know, that falls between the cracks of some of the other ideals that we have of what professional sports should look like. So I got my hands all over this game. Okay, definitely. And you know, see, half the time, I don't know what I'm talking about anyway. She, I, I, I said WNBA, and she's actually, uh, she, she said, I said uh, WNBA, and she's actually a uh, professional athlete over in Europe. Now, by you representing so many athletes across the globe and, you know, things like that, being around pro sports, and I know you probably heard the, story, the, the stories of professional athletes with financial literacy. And the question is, yeah, how does this happen? How does people squander away millions and millions of dollars? And what would be your insight on it? Yeah, there are actually a lot of moving parts, and it's what I call the perfect storm, right? So mm -hmm. you have an athlete that's only played ball their entire life, and um, they've been accustomed to taking care of a lot of people uh, and without a lot of care about discipline, what to do next, having created another cash flow, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden their career ends. This could be because of politics, it could be because of injury, uh, and here they are without any way to replace that cash flow. They have this, you know, luxurious, lavish lifestyle, taking care of multiple family members and friends, and they have invested in a way that's a bit too risky, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
correctly uh, for, uh, you know, where they are in their income earning potential. And then when all those things crash together and that mm. investment that they really didn't understand anyway crashes or doesn't work out, um, they're left trying to pick up the pieces and figure out how to move on with their lives. Um, I saw this happen frequently, right? And I was in situations as a uh, professional athlete where I had individuals telling me things that I knew not to be true. Um, <laughs> I graduated. I had my MBA before I went overseas. And so it really prompted me to explore supporting athletes and teaching them how to manage their lives and their finances in the same way that they have plays and, and blueprints that they utilize on the court and on the field. Yeah. Okay. That's very smart. As you said, you know, uh, the, like, uh, essentially this perfect storm happens, but like, you're right. You know, you say, hey, all you've done is play uh, football or basketball your whole life, and you're yeah. taking care of so many people, and like anything yeah. else, an NFL athlete, you know, it eventually stops, and now you're yeah. left trying to pick up the pieces of the whole situation. Now, my question has to be that we've seen this happen so many times. How does yeah. it continue to happen? Yeah, well, I think that I don't think there's an athlete that – plans for that to happen and most of them don't think that it will happen to them and so um, right now we have a lot of football athletes right that are, are have chosen or are in the process of choosing an agent and it moves very fast after that they really don't have an opportunity you have to think about it these are teenaged you know, athletes or early 20s, young adults, um, many of us had an opportunity to learn how to balance a checkbook and, you know, various life skills like that. They don't get that opportunity. They are thrust into this position uh, of making adult decisions. And, um, you know, there really isn't a framework in place to prepare them for that. Yeah, you can tell them what to do, but unless you're actually showing them and putting processes in place that eliminate the emotional aspect. And I really think that's why it happens. You think about the things that make us great athletes, uh, being impulsive, making split mm -hmm. de second decisions um, and being very passionate about what we do. That doesn't translate well when you're making very important life decisions. And so um, there's a disconnect. And again, I think that there needs to be more support and more of a blueprint to guide their decision making. That's true. Now, you know that you make you know you make great points of saying that, in you know when you're an athlete, you are making impulse decisions. You're you you know you're thrust into all of a sudden, hey, I have to make quick you know quick decisions and things are moving so fast around me, which is great when you're on the basketball court or the football field or something like that. But once you get into the game of life, that's yeah. not really the smartest thing to do. Everything kind of slows down for you. Right. Now right. what are, and you know, like you said, you know, athletes grow up that's that's all they've done their whole life. How does the athlete how does a person know, you know, I'm only um, majority of athletes, by the time they're done with pro sports, they're still in their 20s. Right. How do, they, how, do, how do we figure out what's next? Or what do most athletes just kind of mosey around and right. trying to find their way? How does, how does that happen? Yeah, well, I think that it goes back to, again, the support. And if you think about this, if it's something you don't know about, you don't even know the questions to ask to get started getting the information that you need to learn about it. So everybody talks about financial literacy, but for the great majority of athletes, and I covered this in my book, Surviving the Lights, uh, okay. the great majority of athletes come from very impoverished you know, home situations, right? So they never knew about money. They've never had any money. And so it's very hard to understand where to start that conversation. Then you have this whole fear aspect because they think they're expected to know what to do. But the truth of the matter is there are a lot of professionals out there that play on the fact that they don't know. They don't know the questions to ask. They don't know how to get started. So those of us that are on the other side of the ball, those of us that have gone through this We've got to be a lot more hands-on in telling them about the things that they don't even know to ask about, you know, because, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no real way to prepare to be in what I call the lights, right? But those of us that know what they're about to go through, we've got to reach back and help our young ball players um, because we know exactly what they're going to experience, and we know that they're not prepared to deal with it. Got it, got it, okay. Now, when you looking back over your history, you know, uh, going to Ole Miss, graduating Ole Miss, and going off into pro pro basketball, you know, in Europe, and then being around so many athletes. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we just had, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Was that last month? I think we had, you know, Mr. Walt Harris, another old yeah. Miss. Uh, oh, wow. Yes, Mississippi another, State, the Mississippi, other Mississippi school, other, right? Oh, the other Mississippi <laughs> school, <laughs> right? <laughs> wow, That's okay. what they here. Okay. So, I thought that he, I thought he was old Miss. I forgot he was Mississippi State. You're old Miss. Okay. Right. <laughs> now, looking back over and being around so many athletes, what advice would you say financially? Would you promise the best route to go? Uh, you know, being in the league and being around things like that. Right. Well, I have a couple of pieces of advice. First and foremost, get a mentor who's been there. There is a certain level of wisdom that comes from someone who's worn those cleats or that jersey. So get in, get a mentor that can help you, um, you know, harness that emotional impulse and urge that you have. Um, the second thing I would say is to focus on protecting yourself and your assets first. Okay. Um, that can be your, your body. Obviously, um, if that is the way that you earn your living, uh, your life, there are a lot of individuals that will now depend on you. When you go pro, everybody goes pro. Um, and so making sure you handle that business. And as you know, life insurance isn't just, um, you know, something that's important. If something happens to you, it also has living benefits. Um, and then, you know, your assets, and, and that's something that we see as well. Athletes aren't protecting those things. They're taking it for granted, and they're shelling out a lot of money um, just because of their lack of, 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 you know, I guess, well, protection, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. So those are the two big things I would start off discussing. Um, and then I would have them join, um, you know, some type of investment literacy program through their team. Believe it or not, there are resources through the NBA and the NFL uh, where they provide support. They provide blueprints, game plans, guides to take their emotional decision making out um, and then plan out your rookie season. All right. If you start a certain way, um, you know, it gives you a lot more chance of, you know, ending your career on a high note. One thing that happens as well is that agents will, um, again, they're playing on the fact that an athlete doesn't know. They will put them in positions where they have to spend money to get that whole lifestyle spending cycle started, right? Uh, if you have a mentor that's going to tell you beforehand, hey, figure out if you're going to have to pay for this. Um, don't get involved in this type of purchase because when you get your first check it's gone and a lot of times they don't think that far ahead because in fact you know in a lot of cases they're kids so those three things is what i'd say get a mentor focus mentor. on protecting your assets mm -hmm. and plan out your expenditures for your entire rookie season and i think when they see those numbers you know it'll make a little bit more sense um you know when you're talking specifics Okay. Now, one thing I heard you hit on is that I hear a lot of people say about life insurance, right? Yeah. When you spoke about life insurance and you spoke about living benefits. When I was younger, you know, I used to always think life insurance for old people. I was right. like, you know, <laughs> somebody die, you know, I need life insurance, you know, I'm not going to die anytime soon. Right. How do you see life insurance fitting into a financial picture, especially? especially the athlete who's making right. millions of dollars or at least hundreds of thousands. Right. Well, it's really like a forced savings. You know, you think about it. Um, and, and I know that, and I'm a fan of some of Dave Ramsey's, um, principles, but you have people that are say, okay, just buy term insurance and invest the difference. That's cool. If you're actually disciplined enough to invest what you save. But for most of us, that's what we're wrestling with, you know, our human nature and that sort of thing. Um, and so you'll buy the term and then you'll spend the difference. Well, with athletes, again, this is a part of protecting them from themselves in a lot of cases, right? So um, it forces them to save uh, money that can be pulled on from retirement. You think of a traditional 401k and their pensions that they get through the respective leagues. Well, it's not commensurate with their income. I mean, you're looking at $10 million. They have a cap on the amount that they can put in a 401k. So this provides another savings vehicle for them, you know, an investment vehicle, depending on the type of life insurance that they, that they utilize. Uh, but it's just another tool in their portfolio. Okay. Um, like you said, you know, being, you know, how life insurance plays a role, being another investment vehicle outside of that 401k, since it's capped and everything like that. 
when you speak on people using, uh, like you said, like Dave Ramsey said, you, you hit on something major that for people don't understand, you know, one of Dave Ramsey's principles is that, hey, just get a term policy and that's the rest, right? Versus having a whole life policy, which is more expensive right. and you may not need it and there's fees associated with it, things like that. But it's, like you said, most people are not disciplined enough. They'll pay the 40, 50, 100 bucks a month, but then they're below the rest of it. Right. So they don't, they don't have anything, you know, they're not disciplined enough. Now, another thing that would term policy, like today I'm 33 years old. If I got a 30-year policy, you know, simple math tells you when I'm 63, my right. term policy will probably be over. I have no more right. coverage. And then usually around the age of 60 in my family, that's when the problems usually start to happen. Start, right. That's when you need it. <laughs> that's right. when I'm like, okay, I don't want to cancel when I need it. So, you know, I lean more to a whole life policy in that instance for myself personally. I get what Mr. Ramsey is saying, like, hey, dude, get a term policy and, uh, you know, get a very cheap term policy, invest the rest. By the time you're in your 60s, you'll be, you know, self-insured or whatever the case may be. But I like to think of it and say, well, say if I, that's when I start to get the complications. That's right. when I'm not <laughs> making any more money. You know, this is, the, and then now, when it's time for me to go renew my term, it's for way, way more. So right. which one do you think is, you know, you kind of lean towards a term or a whole life? I am a fan of whole life, especially if you can afford it. And these athletes that we're talking about, they can. Um, now, how much? Is, it just totally depends on your situation. But, you know, the second part of this is the, the wealth creation and the legacy building mm -hmm. that we look at, the generational wealth, right? Um, most of these athletes, as I said, have family members that depend on them, that won't work a day in their lives and that, you know, being connected to that athlete is important to their livelihood. They have parents that they want to take care of. They have children. And so in the event that something happens to them, and unfortunately we've seen, you know, over a hundred athletes, you know, over the, over the last couple of decades that, um, you know, have passed away. Um, you want to be able to leave a legacy behind, which, which really makes your responsibility right, on an entirely different level, maturely, um, because the rates are so sensitive to your age and your health, right, and, and again, you can afford it, right, and we, you, you can look at different options, seven pay options, ten pay options, where, you know, you don't have to worry, you're not looking at, okay, I've got to pay this amount when I'm 60, you know, I don't know what I'm going to be doing when I'm 60. There are ways to get that coverage locked in, Right. Mm -hmm. um, and take advantage of the time value of money. And those are some of the important foundational blocks that we look at instituting uh, with a lot of the clients that I that I talk to. And they don't think of life insurance that way. You know, the same way you said you were raised to think about it. And once they start thinking about some of the benefits and some of the tricks that we just weren't privy to, it usually buys them in at a very low risk opportunity to invest. OK, now. You made a very great point there. Uh, it's almost forcing you to invest in a way of right. uh, using, utilizing a life insurance policy to be able to pull off of, you know, tax free and things right. like that. But one thing I wanted to, to get to is something that you said in the beginning that you're a best selling author, right? Right. You're a best selling author. Uh, your book is called um, Time in the Lights. Surviving the life. Sur surviving, surviving the life. The life. Right? Yeah. Now, yeah. tell us about your book and what makes yeah. you write this. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at issues just like you. I mean, we see the stories in the media and, you know, as you said, athletes are still making the same mistakes. And I'm like, I mean, are they, are they just looking at this for entertainment or really to educate themselves on things to, to look for? And so once I really thought about what an athlete goes through from the moment they hire an agent they're off to train because they're preparing for the draft they're trying to solidify the contract when they get there they're trying to stay on the roster um you know how it is in the nfl you know every night you know night in and night out you have no idea um you know what's going to happen because of the guarantees and that sort of thing in your contract barring injury and all these things um there's so much that goes on and i call that the athlete's dilemma right you got practice games you're traveling if you get hurt you got rehab, you want to spend time with your family, you got media appearances, you want to spend time, you know, to yourself. And so you don't really have time to slow down and go on this crash course that you need uh, to be up to speed on how to manage yourself day to day and all of your expenses and investments. 
And so I said, you know, we got to get to these young athletes sooner, right? We have to start this process on the way up. And so I wrote the book to focus on all of the things off the court and off the field that truly impact a lot of those money decisions and some of those poor life decisions that we see being made. And so the book is designed for high school and uh, collegiate athletes. And it's it's written more of a self-help style, so you can skip around through the chapters. But uh, they really focus on what to expect from dealing with your family members, you know, when, when that time comes, uh, from dealing with people of the opposite sex to the leeches, people that attach to you, leaving your legacy, your mental health. There are all of these different issues that are very prevalent in our sport that really change lives. It's not, sometimes we get so fixated on the money that we don't realize all of the other activities that affect the money decisions that we have to make. And so that's what I wanted to accomplish with the book. I want to get them thinking business sooner, uh, um, so that they will survive the lights. Wow. Okay. Well, um, what we're going to do um, for you guys that are here, we're going to drop the link below. And if you want to check out um, Mr. Tawana Smith's uh, book, we're going to have a book, okay. you know, a link to her book here. And also the person who, whatever, who, whoever comments first with uh, the word, I don't know, Tawana Smith, what will come up with the word Tawana Smith, you know, you, we're going to send you a free courtesy copy from the Investor Show to wherever you're at around the world. So yeah. the person who comment, 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 comment. comment with yeah. the words to Tawana Smith, <laughs> you're going to get a free autograph copy. Not autograph, I can't, you know, I'm in Denver, Colorado, but we're going to make sure a copy get out to you, you know, wherever you're at. Right. And for people out there who, you know, um, Whoever comments first, then I'm going to send them an email and, you know, get their address. And, you know, like we always do in the end, that's the show. You always get treats from the guests when you watch. So Yay. that's great that, you know, not only did you go through the, the league in a process, um, that you actually are doing something about it. You know, right. um, I want to commend you on that and say that's a great job of actually turning around and say, hey, you know, we see these stories all the time. We hear about them all the time. So what are we going to do about them? Right. So now you're, solutions. You're, you're, yeah, solutions. Right. You know, everybody got the problem. Everybody right. can talk about the problem. How many people are going to bring in solutions and how many people actually have something in hand that can help with bringing a solution because we always can hear and talk about problems all the time. All day now, long. All right. <laughs> right. I ask you a question. Who's going to win the Super Bowl tomorrow? I don't hmm? know. Who do you think is going to win? I know the Patriots are going to win. You know it? Okay. I know the Patriots are going to win. You know, this is some crazy upset. It's going to be easy. I won't say it'll be a walk in the park. I think it'll come down to a tight game. It'll right. probably be about 24 to 30 points. Okay. You know, 24 to 30. I see some. Maybe four points. That's who I see a win. Say Tom Brady's going to get right. Super Bowl for six. You know, you were a pro athlete. Right. I had to answer that question. Right. I'm going to hold you to that. We got it on tape. So I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> you can be like, oh, right. he knew they was going to win and everything. Yeah, in the pictures. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Today. Right. Now, where are you located right now? I am in Tupelo, Mississippi. I split time between Tupelo and Memphis. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, you know, um, I've been having a Mississippi in a long time. But now, the next thing I want to get into that you, you spoke about during your books, you spoke about becoming a professional athlete, uh, playing with Ole Miss. You spoke about the, the what people need to do, and I really like how you brought in how life insurance can help people out. Going back over your career, is there anything that you would have done different so far? Yeah. Hmm. That's is there a anything good question. You say, I wish or I could have done that a little yeah. bit better. Definitely. Yeah, I would have asked more questions. There were things that I didn't know and I was curious about, but I was afraid to ask questions because I felt like it would make me look, you know, a certain way because I was expected to know this. I wish I would have spoke up a little bit more to make sure I had a clear understanding about various things in my career. I suffered an injury. I tore my ACL when I was in high school and I suffered with problems throughout my collegiate career, I would have. I wish I would have asked more questions then, um, that would have prevented a lot of those things, and then maybe I could have been in the WNBA. Um, but 
you know, they were just very. I just want to ask you, so when you said you tore your ACL, what questions would you have asked? Well, even about my rehabilitation Mm -hmm. and um, things I needed to do to make sure that my knee was strong. Um, I had a couple of scopes and and things in college because I still suffered with, um, you know, things with the same same knee. Right. Um, And I would have I would wish I would have asked more questions there to make sure that I understood everything I needed to do rather than just depending on them to tell me. You know, come to rehab and do this. That you know, there were things I could have done on my own um, that probably would have prevented a lot of those little nagging injuries that I suffered. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, that's a great thing. You know, looking at an injury and knowing if yeah. you rehabilitated your injury right. You know, right. that's a great thing. Now, for anybody out there that is listening, that's listening now, they hear this on the playback, they hear this on the podcast, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, Instagram, and things like that. Um, how, what would you want them to take away from this? And how could people get in contact with it they want to get in contact with it? Right, right. Um, I guess the, the big thing is to learn about whatever you're involved in, whether it's finances, investment, the business of sports, learn about that immense immerse yourself in that thing absorb it learn all that you can and don't be afraid to ask questions uh, if you want to reach me because I have um, a myriad of different tools and mm-hmm. um, processes and systems I call them my athlete arsenal please mm-hmm. visit my website tawanasmith.com that's t-y-w-a-n-n-a-s-m-i-t-h dot com okay do you have any social medias I do. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, Tawana D. Smith. Tawana D. Smith and all of them. Yep. Okay. I have to keep it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> right. Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, Mr. Tawana Smith, we want to thank you for stopping out of the uh, show. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your history. For the people out there, um, you know, be the first person to get in contact with me to let me know that you want a copy of Mr. Tawana Smith's uh, book best-selling book and we will get that out to you all you gotta do is just let us know you um let us know your mailing address but um until the next video podcast or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe my name is prince dax the prince of investing and to the next whatever you see me do <laughs> peace be safe i'm out thank you thank you